In this video, we're talking about Scottsdale City Court and specifically how they process cases through their criminal court system. This is the general framework that you see here. It starts with an arraignment, it goes through a pretrial conference. I've talked about those in other videos. Today, we're talking about the Case Management Conference, the CMC. It's generally the third court date in a person's criminal case. We'll talk about what exactly happens at the CMC, and then give you some tips on what to do if you're representing yourself. Now, we don't recommend people represent themselves in criminal cases, but sometimes people have no other choice. If you're going to be representing yourself at the case management conference, hopefully this video will help. Typically, this is the second actual meeting in court where you're meeting with the prosecutor. So it's usually the third meeting, but the second one where you're actually meeting with the prosecutor. You've already been to your pretrial conference, gotten the initial plea deal, and at the pretrial, the judge will give you a what's called a CMC form. It's called the Case Management Conference form, and it's going to cover these different things. So when you come back to the CMC, the judge is gonna to wanna to make sure that it's filled out and really that these answer these questions are answered. So these are just a couple of them. It's really about two pages, but they wanna know if there are any problems with discovery. Discovery is the exchange of police reports and any information related to the case. So basically anything that's in the government's file, anything that you as a defendant want to disclose to the prosecutor in terms of text messages or uh, interviews that you've completed, or if you have expert witnesses or any of those things, it's a back and forth exchange of information. So the judge wants to know, are there any problems with it? Is anybody withholding discovery? Have you made requests for this stuff and you have not been, uh, been complied with? You have not gotten those things. The judge will want to make sure that they can talk about those and address those things. They also want to know in DUI cases, are there blood results? Has the blood been tested? Are you going to be requesting an independent test? Those types of things. The judge just really wants an update on that. Of course, blood results don't apply to every case, but the judge is very specific. They want to know about DUI cases because there are strict rules by the Supreme Court on how quickly those should be processed. Also, the form will ask you, have interviews been completed? So they want to know, have you done your interviews with the police officers, with any other witnesses that are listed, uh, with anybody else who's really involved with the case? They want to know if the interviews have not been completed, why not? You have a right to do those, so the judge just wants an update. Make sure the case is moving forward. Similarly, the court wants to know if you're going to be using expert witnesses, say for example, somebody to retest the blood in a DUI case, or somebody to come in and talk about how radar works, or whatever it is that's relevant to your case. The court wants to know, are you using them, and have they been disclosed, and if not, why not? Court will also want to know if there's going to be any pretrial motions. So, are you going to be filed a motion, filing a motion to suppress or a motion to preclude testimony or evidence or any of those things, really substantive motions? Are you going to be filing them because the case is moving along towards the trial path? As I said, we're, we're here, so we're about over halfway through with the case. So the court is starting to ask these questions so they can determine whether or not the case is likely to be resolved or whether it's going to continue to move forward towards a trial. What normally will happen is there's also some additional uh, negotiations that are taking place between you and the prosecutor, or if we're representing you between our office and the prosecutor's office to see if we can maybe break out here. So draw a separate line off of here to re reach a plea deal or some negotiated resolution or dismiss the charges or do diversion or do any one of these things. You can really break off at this point. You don't have to go to trial from any of this. You can take a plea deal at any point, but of course we only want you to do that if it's gonna put you in a better position and meet your goals. We're not gonna take a plea deal just for the sake of taking a plea deal. But if it is something that puts us in a better position, we can do that. And so we may have some negotiations that are still taking place during the case management conference. So as I, as I said, there's the, that negotiation taking place, but there are some formalities and some different ways you can do this. What you wanna be considering is what's called a deviation request. So let's say, for example, you go to the pretrial conference, they give you a plea deal, you don't like that plea deal, you can submit what's called a deviation request. So you're asking them to deviate from that deal. If this is their standard policy offer that they gave you here, you can say, I want you to deviate from that. So give me a better deal, drop it down a little bit. Here's what I'm willing to do in order to uh, accomplish that goal. Here are some of the problems in your case. There's sort of a, a good formula that we use in, in, in our practice where we uh, will go through and, and formulate a, a very 
solid written deviation request that is formally sent over to the city prosecutor and then they will typically do staffing meetings and they'll all review it and they'll get us an answer. So sometimes we get that answer here, sometimes we get that answer down here at the trial readiness conference, but you definitely wanna be thinking about deviation material and how you're going to structure that request and that argument. Some other tips, you wanna make sure that you get everything possible completed. So all of this stuff, you wanna make sure that it's completed because if it's not done and ready and you can't go through that form, that CMC form and say done, 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 no, no, yes, yes, it's all done, the judge may wanna hear from you. The judge may wanna say, why not, what are you doing? In other words, keep the case moving forward and you don't wanna be as the defendant on the side where you're getting scolded by the judge for not complying with the rules. Just because you don't have an attorney doesn't necessarily mean that the rules don't apply to you. The judge may give you a little bit of leeway and say they understand that you're not, you know, you're, you're pro per, you're representing yourself, but they're also not gonna say, well, in that case, the rules don't apply. You still have to follow the rules. And so the judge may uh, come down on you a little bit if you have not done so. The other thing is you wanna begin uh, preparing what's called mitigation. Mitigation, I've got other videos about, but mitigation is where we're talking about really the positive side of you, who you are as a person, what you're doing with your life, school, work, family, other relationships, community involvement, community service, church, those types of things. How can we frame you as a full person, as a full human? It's called mitigation, and that can be useful, it can be persuasive in a deviation request, depending on the circumstances and the facts of your case. It normally by itself is not going to get you a better deal, but it can be a little bit persuasive if you're kind of teetering there on the balance, you wanna tip it over the scale, mitigation can be very helpful. And then finally, you wanna be prepared to address any issues. So if you've got any problems with the prosecutor or how they're uh, processing your case or how they're treating you or whether they're being unresponsive, this is the best time to address that. You, you will have kind of an open forum, on the form, there's, t there's generally, the form changes from time to time, but there's typically a thing, are there any other issues that need to be addressed? So if you have any issues, that's a good time to write that down because when you go in and turn that form into the court and to the judge, the judge is gonna read through it, they'll actually call your case. In most situations, the CMC, unless you're gonna be taking a plea deal, it's also continued. You have another continuance from the CMC to the TRC. We'll talk about that later, but a CMC to a TRC, it's usually 45 days, sometimes 30 days, sometimes longer, depending on the court's calendar. But you wanna address any issues here so that between the CMC and the TRC, you have time, the court has time to issue some orders, to order the government, order the prosecutors to disclose this, or to get that officer to comply with an interview, to complete a deposition, whatever it is that is the issue, the judge can address it here so that the case continue to move forward. So that's what happens at the case management conference. Again, this is specific to Scottsdale. They call things certain things and they proceed a certain way. This is not applicable to every court in Arizona. It's the same general principles and same general framework, but this is specific to Scottsdale. So if you've been charged with a crime out of Scottsdale, if you're preparing for a case management conference, if you have any other questions about how any of this stuff works, our office is literally minutes north of the Scottsdale City Court. We practice there all the time. We know the ins and out of the whole system. So if you have questions, give us a call. We offer free case evaluations. We're happy to meet with you at any stage of your case to see what we can do to help, to see if we can give you some guidance on the best way to reach the best outcome. So we look forward to speaking with you soon. Thanks for watching.